OK, now Clive Palmer has confirmed he won't recontest his seat of Fairfax in the upcoming election. As the Palmer United Party leader listed his achievements as an MP, he took a parting swipe at his former senators. I think it's good to reflect upon the fact that when we had the balance of power in the parliament, which was given to us by the people of Australia, the heat was really on Glenn Lazarus and Jackie Lambie uh, to defect, to do anything to stop us taking the stands that we did take in the Senate. Clive says the party's focus will be on the upper house this election, but is yet to confirm whether he will be running himself. Now, in a Breakfast TV exclusive, Clive Palmer joins us from Canberra this morning. Clive, good morning. Good morning, Sam. How are you? Well, very well. Now, you haven't spoken uh, an awful lot about your wife, Anna, and how she affects your decision-making process until now. Have you spoken to Anna, and will you be contesting a seat in the Senate? I still don't, I still don't know I've got to talk to her and the children, you know. When you leave one job and, and you are married, you just can't make unilateral decisions for your wife and your family. You really need to have a proper discussion. So certainly we'll be hope by the day the uh, party uh, closes the nominations for the Queensland ticket, I'll know what I'm doing. OK, so uh, the people of Fairfax are said to be happy you're gone. You, you won that seat in 2013 by just 53 votes. Mm -hmm. Are you getting out before you voted out? No, I, I moved to the Gold Coast about eight eight months ago and I think the, a member should live in his local community. But uh, you know, there's 14,831 people in Fairfax that received the school kids bonus because of Palmer United. $35 million was paid to them. There's another 35,000 people in Fairfax that got uh, low uh, income supplement support. Um, and right across Australia, there's $1.8 billion on lower electricity prices when we uh, got rid of the carbon tax. So they're all pretty happy. They've all been well looked after and uh, they've all had real dividends from me being their member. So have you still got the fire in your belly? Do you, would you still want to be in Canberra, in Parliament House, in the Senate? Well, it's up to the people of Australia to decide what you do. And it's certainly, first of all, like anyone, I've got to just talk to my wife and see what I want to do. I'm 62 and see where we're going. But the exciting thing is that Palm United will be contesting every um, Senate election right across Australia. And yesterday I announced their new policy, and that was that when politicians leave Parliament, and there's over 70 of them leaving this term, that they shouldn't be paid any entitlements and continue to bludge on the taxpayer. So we, we've got a zero tolerance for people getting entitlements and that's a new policy for Australia. And if we get the balance of power in the Senate, we hope we have the leverage to implement it. Is part of this about sort of uh, thumbing your nose at Jackie Lambie and Glenn Lazarus? Not really at all. It's, uh, uh, they're not consequential to what I do. But I think it's wrong that taxpayers go on for some time for 30 or 40 years paying politicians uh, because they've decided to serve the community. All right, Clive, what did you think of, uh, of uh, Tuesday night's budget? Well... We have to realise that we have an economy of $1,500 billion and the focus is whether or not our deficit is $10 billion or $35 billion. That's probably less than half a percent difference they're arguing about. Really, the real question isn't about the 10 or $35 billion. What are you going to do with the other $1.5 billion in the economy? How are we going to generate jobs? How are we going to have economic growth? You know, Malcolm Turnbull said when he got rid of Tony Abbott that he was going because he had an economic plan for Australia. You can talk about growth and jobs, but he just doesn't have the policies to deliver. So, so would you like to be in a position where you could block this budget like you did in 2014 in the Senate? No, we'd like to be in a position where we could give the government positive suggestions that they take notice of, like we did with the Chev visas when we freed 30,000 people from detention, 450 kids from Christmas Island, or when they accepted our, our, our policy in relation to labelling, or when Tony Abbott uh, was in his first cabinet meeting, took Palm United's policy to ban lobbyists from party positions, or when my, or my speech on gender equality in the parliament earlier this year was adopted by Minister Cash in March, so that women would be 50% on all Commonwealth boards. So, you know, you don't have to be in Parliament, you don't have to have the balance of power, but you have to have the right ideas for this country. That's what's important. So, so which bits... Are, I mean, it's been called a fairly dull budget for an election year. Which bits of this would you like to, to block? Which bits do you think are unfair? Well, I just think it's a nothing budget, you know. Scott Morrison's morphed into the public servant. He walks like a public servant, he talks like a public servant, he acts like a public servant. He just has no imagination or flair whatsoever. And there's no way that this could be in a budget that the people would win an election on. Okay. Uh, people have great expectations for Malcolm Turnbull. He lets them down every day, where they don't have the same expectations for Bill Shorten, but they know that he'll probably deliver. Uh, almost 800 retrenched uh, Queensland nickel workers still waiting for over $70 million in entitlement. If you ran for the Senate, how would you fund that campaign? 
Well, the party would fund it. You know, we've got over 8,000 members throughout Australia, just like all the other political parties. But the real question is, um, what about the Liberal Party, only declaring 42% of their donors, their uh, Cabinet Secretary refusing to appear before the Senate to say where their money's coming from? That's great concern. And the Liberal Party doesn't publish accounts. They haven't got an auditor. And uh, the former Treasurer of the Liberal Party said to me that he, he was having to resign as Treasurer because only three people knew where the money was, and that was Tony Abbott, um, her husband, uh, sorry, uh, Peter Cretland and her husband. Mm. And that's an intolerable position. Look if, what's happened in New South Wales. If you, if you listen to your wife, Anna, so much, what does she say to you in your quieter moments at home about those uh, nickel workers in Townsville? She said, like I did, that the administrator shouldn't have sacked them. After all, I had $23 million uh, that I offered to inject. He was looking for $10 million from the Queensland government. I said, here, here's $23 million. We'll put a new manager in and we'll keep the thing going. And he said, no, I won't do that. I won't get the new manager in. I'm going to sack the 550 people. I'm not going to pay them entitlements and I'm going to close the refinery. That's the true story. We never sacked anyone. We never refused to pay anyone's entitlements. We want to save the refinery and there are people still working there now and it will reopen. Okay. Clive Palmer, thanks for your time today. God bless you. God bless Australia. Yes, Koshy.